The mail never stops. Here comes the mailman. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. Mail time. When you control the mail, you control information. If there's something strange in your league, who you gonna call? Sleep on wire! Oh man, so much good information. Mail never <laughs> stops. It's so much good information in that, in the mail, you know, and we're here. Another great show. What's up, sleepers? What's up? What's up? Dirty jobs. What's up? What's happening, man? You know what's funny is that I just now realized that that's you on that mail sack engine. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, dude, that's who's. I'm like, that's crazy. <laughs> Lucas, what's going on, man? Hey, just excited. Just excited we're, that football we're, is here. We're 24 here. hours. We're here. Payday, babies. Look around, Payday. guys. It's, it's glorious. It's glorious. It's, it's, you could just look around and just see so many beautiful rosters. Uh, you know, especially if you're in as many leagues as I am, unfortunately, it's an unfortunate, fortunate thing, you know, when you're in like, you know, 19 leagues, you know, but, uh, you know, yeah, I have my fun days, I have my, you know, my sad days. Some Sundays are great. Some Sundays are not so great, but, you know, we're here for you to make sure your Sundays are going to be better. Uh, so we got the mail sack. The sack is full. As always, we're going to rip it open. Uh, Dirty Jobs, you got a first question for me? Dude, I've got so many questions. It's unreal. Oh, man. It's but our first guy coming up is Cheesy Bread 305. Cheesy and he bread. says, if Bell sits out for a couple of weeks, where do you rank James Conner? RB1 range? What do you think, Lucas? I have him kind of middling RB2. He's right. The O-line's pretty decent there. He's pretty good. But like I was saying earlier when we were talking before this started, I think Jalen Samuels gets his shot also and gets part of that workload. And I think Samuels is the better actual player. So I think Connors, uh, James Connor will be someone that you can use for sure, but don't expect Le'Veon Bell production out of him. Dirty jobs. Um, I'm pulling up my rankings right here, and I feel like in PPR I've got this guy sitting about 15, 16, and I've got him sitting right about the same place in standard at 17. Uh, I also kind of disagree with Lucas. I feel like Tomlin is the type of coach that when he when he says he's going to do something, he sets on that, and he doesn't vary. He's the one kind of coach that you can count on to – not run a running back by committee. So I think what he'll be doing is uh, I think we'll see a heavy dose of James Conner, and I'm not too sure that we're going to see Le'Veon Bell hit the football field this year. I'm just I'm saying it now. I don't think that they reach an agreement. I think he might actually just sign, take the money, and sit the bench. So you think he's going to pull a Marshawn Lynch here without actually – it's not the same exact predicament, but take a year off, come back. Marshawn's looked, you know, he, he didn't look as great. You know, I, I I think he had his flashes, you know, last year. But, I mean, at the preseason, he he looked amazing. So, I mean, he's he's got to preserve his body, preserve his contract. He's got to do his business. You know, I know a lot of Bell owners are mad out there. And, you know, uh, you, you see a lot of or maybe some of them are, you know, they're, they're believing that things are all fine. Um, but this is, you know, <laughs> you think of the, you, all, you think of the emoji, well, not the emoji, the, uh, gif with the, uh, the dog, dog on, on you know, fire. The dog on fire. Yeah. Yes. I was totally call. thinking of that when you said, <laughs> oh, it'll be fine. <laughs> Every, everything's fine. This is fine. I'm totally fine with the way things are going outside. Um, yeah, I mean, this is troubling. Um, right now I have them in my PPR rankings, uh, 15, um, and in standard 18, um, I, I do agree with dirty jobs, but at the same time, I, I do think that Jalen Samuels is a better talent by the eye of what we've seen so far. If you just look at them, you know, back to back, uh, not much of a difference in stature. Both guys are pretty much, you know, so both guys pass blocking should be the same. Um, maybe Connor gets the edge, but he certainly earned the job. So he has the job. 
Uh, I don't know if, yeah, I definitely think Samuels does get a couple touches. They're not going to, you know, split it out. But if, you know, if we do see Samuels see closest, close to of the production that, you know, he's, um, you, you know, with a little, with not as much work, you know, if if he's more efficient, basically, uh, then I I think we can see, you know, maybe not next week or the week after, you know, you know but maybe we'll see Jalen Samuels down the line, maybe possibly taking over. So yeah, I definitely put him on the watch list if if you know if I'm a, a Connor owner now. Um, but you know, this is all if Bell does not show up. Bell could show up tomorrow. And just smash, you know, all, all the Connor dreams, you know, like Terminator, you know, and <laughs> just so right. we, we, we don't know. But it's, it's fun to think about, you know, I actually traded Connor away for Peyton Barber. I felt like I had to do it just because I love Peyton Barber so much. Uh, but I would say that's about the range you can get from if you're looking for a trade. Maybe you can get more. You oh, know, I've, I've seen people look looking for more. Um, wait till but, Sunday morning. Yeah, wait and then till hit then. That Le'Veon Bell owner up if you've yep. got the if you've got Connor and you could probably just get whatever you want. That is right. That is right. Uh, Lucas, you got the second question for us? Yeah. So the second real question. Quick, hold on. Let me just interrupt you real fast, guys. Sorry, because we're doing ourselves an injustice. Fans, if you want to call us, oh call my in god, right now. Oh my it's god. Three two zero twenty four sleep. Or twenty four seven five three three seven. Give us a call, guys. We'll get your questions. Do it right now. 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 Like you know, if you're interested, you know, in hearing it now, you know. All right, Lucas. Let's, let's get let's, let's get the second question. Okay. So the second one, you know, people they, they want to know what's going on here. Um better R B to have off of waivers, Connor or Jamal Williams? Hoosh, <laughs> what do you think? Uh, yeah, give me Jamal Williams on this one. Um, Connor it. just is not, even though he walks into a, a, a beautiful, you know, it's, it's a magnificent, beautiful room, you know, that he's, he gets to step into. It, it, he he should be able to do great things, but I love me some Jamal Williams, and I think he's going to do very well, especially with Aaron Jones not there. Uh, you know, Ty Montgomery, he's going to be playing his role. They don't have much, you know, wide receivers that I think Jordy counts on. I think Ty is one of them. I'm sorry, not Jordy, <laughs> Rogers. <laughs> uh, Rogers counts on. Um, I think Ty Montgomery is one of those, going to be one of those guys. So that makes me feel even more comfortable with Jamal Williams uh, getting a nice amount of touches. So, yeah, I, I'd still take Jamal Williams here, especially the rest of the season. Yeah, that's uh, what I'd look at it too is, I mean, Jamal William or uh, James Conner will be good for a couple of weeks, right? I mean, I feel like I, I really feel like James Conner might be the good grab here because he might be the running back there. And just to just to throw it out there, I don't think that he's the better back of the two. I really don't. I think who's before the show when you said this, you nailed it on the head. You said he earned that job, and I think right. in a Tomlin system. When you earn that job, you get that job, and you do that job until you are physically unable to do that job. And that's just where I'm at with that whole thing. I feel like that's why Connor is ahead of, ahead for me, like ahead of Samuels. It's just it's just that's the philosophy that I've seen Tomlin go with, and I feel like that he's going to continue with that philosophy. And I mean – I feel like he's stubborn enough that even if Connor is the worst of the two, he'll still start <laughs> Connor, like because right. that's how firm that man right. is yeah. in his principles, you know. So, but with that said, I do like James Connor, Jamal Williams. He's going to be your guy there all season long. Me and Lucas turned me on him, and ever since then, I, I can't stop thinking about Jamal Williams getting on every single one of my teams. Yeah, I have to agree. Yep. Yeah, Jamal Williams, Williams. I think that he season long, you know, he's going to finish as a as a fringe RB one, RB two, mm-hmm. and you know he can catch, he can block, and he can run with an Aaron Rodgers led offense. Uh, it's hard to go away from that. And Connor, we have there's no guarantees there, so he's the hot name right now. Just don't overreact to it. I want to know what league you're in where Jamal Williams on your waivers. Yeah. I mean, that, <laughs> that just shouldn't be, you know, but Hey, you know, definitely go, 
Uh, and I mean, if you can get both of these guys, right. if you can somehow, you know, free up a roster spot, you know, and maybe trade, you know, do a two for, you know, you do a two for one, um, and open up a roster spot and try to get both of these guys on your roster if you can, because both of these or, guys, I definitely want. Or tell me who's on your team that's so much better than the. These two, right. you got to right. keep them. Like, right. because these guys are some of my top ranked backs this week. All right, exactly. Exactly. All right, uh, Farm Hole. He says Gordon or Cole for PPR. Who is he starting here? Farm Hole wants to know. Dirty jobs. I, I'm not even hesitating. It's Keelan Cole for me. Lucas? He's, he's just too good. Yeah, I mean, it's it's tough for me to bench Josh Gordon. But I think Keelan Cole is going to be the safer play here. Um, we know that they're going to need him to be productive, or at least we think we do, to win this game. So that's where I would go is is Keelan Cole. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you guys here, Keelan Cole. I mean, you guys know we love Keelan Cole. Lucas and I, we, we just planted our flag on him some quite some time ago. That's right. And, and just, man... <laughs> Man, hey, I bought a boat and I made rocket. my way to that island. You did, so, you did, you did, did. you did. I'm on you, the you're there. train too. No, you've been there. You've been there. You, you know, he's you're you, you're there with the bear. You're definitely there with the bear. Okay. So <laughs> well, my question is is correct me if I'm wrong, but Josh Gordon isn't starting this week. I mean, they said he'll play, no, but he's no. not going to start. Am I correct? Right. Yeah, he he does say he's 100. percent So they're going to look to give him opportunities out there. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't foresee him seeing more than five targets. Um, yeah, you know, uh, maybe he gets three of them. You know, he gives you about eight points. Uh, you know, I don't know, maybe more if he score, he is, gets a touchdown. You know, maybe he gets you about 13 points. You know, which is nice. Yeah, it's nice. You know, um, going to show but, everybody yeah. why we're so right this Sunday. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. Love me some Keelan Cole. Dirty jobs. You got another question for us? Um, yes, I do. We got Con John Silver says, will Rex Burkhead stay viable even after Sony Michelle returns? I I don't know about you guys, but I completely avoided this guy in every single one of my drafts. I have zero shares of Rex Burkhead because I just don't like his situation. I don't like what's happening in New England. I don't think New England's going to be this big powerhouse team that everybody thinks they are. Uh, that's it's tough. I, I don't necessarily disagree with you because you know I was you know early, you know, in, in the off season I was saying I'm not drafting Tom Brady this year. You know, like I just didn't feel like, especially the way he ended the year, like he he didn't help. He he lost you. You know, championship. You know, you're, you're in your playoffs. You didn't even get to championships. You know, because he didn't help you get there. You know, he was giving you like 13 points in, in your playoffs. You know that that's not helping you. You know, so I I definitely can see it, but I think that he's not he he's not going down like that. You know, so I think that he's he's definitely gonna give you a fair share, and those guys are gonna benefit. They're gonna have great games. Is it gonna be consistent? No, no player usually. Uh, in a Patriot uniform is going to be consistent on, on the, you know, week to week basis. Uh, but Rex Burkhead is, you know, he's a solid viable option. Now um, with Sony, Michelle comes back. I do think that Sony, I, I, I still think that they split. I think uh, just because Burkhead still is good catching passes out the backfield. I mean, maybe you don't see as much as James White. You might just see more of the tandem between those two. Uh, but aside from that, um, yeah, I mean, I think that answers your question. Lucas? I think Rex stays relevant, especially in a PPR, mm-hmm. um, even when Sony comes back. And I think that's just because they will find – they've said that they're going to use him in the red zone, which I really believe that they will, potentially around the goal line. And I think that he can also line up in the slot. So he's has an ability to move around and just be on the field. And with the overall lack of – receivers that they currently have especially with edelman gone for the first four weeks my only real issue with burkhead is the knee yeah health a a slight a slight tear in the knee like well what you know what is it's so vague with the information sounds so painful 
And it was and, undisclosed too. Like when they, <laughs> yeah. You know, well, I mean, the Patriots are always vague, you know, and they're always uh, undisclosed, this, you know, this and that. But it's definitely worrisome. I feel like if I have a slight tear in anything, I'm pretty much useless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, I'll definitely with you there. Um, <laughs> yeah. This, but yeah, I mean, if Rex Burkhead, he should still be useful, but that's what you got to worry about. I mean, you definitely have to worry about his health, but when he's out there, he's like the Jordan Reed of backs, you know, like he's, you know, you use him, you know, and he, and he gives you RB one numbers, you know, when, when, when he is healthy. Uh, so he's definitely nice to have, uh, I would continue to, you know, have some faith in him. Uh, I wouldn't try to get rid of him for any hyped up guys, um, like a Connor or something like that. I'd still hope or get over Connor. I'd still hope or get over, um, a, like maybe Alfred Morris, um, just because he splits with Breda there. Uh, and I think that the Patriots still have a better offense. Um, but other than that, yeah, I mean, I, he's he's a pretty good guy. Uh, Lucas, you got another question for us? Yeah. So our next one here um, that got answered: Start Mike Williams or Dion Lewis at my flex half point. I think you got to. I love Mike Williams, but I think you got to go Dion Lewis j- just for more guaranteed touches until we see um, until we see how they use Mike Williams. I do like I love having Mike Williams on my team though. So uh but I think Deion Lewis is the safer play for week one. Who's what agree. do you think? Sorry, I jumped Mike, in. I agree. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. I, I can't even argue. That's all I'll say. I like Deion Lewis. You know I love Deion Lewis. I know, I know. I'm not a Henry fan. I have zero zero shares of Henry, but I have two or three shares of Dion. Me too. Okay, so, uh, but we love Mike Williams, though we absolutely, and, and I'm not worried about Gates being there at all because Gates saw 12, 13 red zone targets last year, and there was still plenty. You know, Hunter Henry saw the same amount, so Hunter Henry's gone just because Gates is there. They still need someone in the red zone. I love Keenan Allen, but he's really not their red zone guy. Um, Mike Williams should because he can't catch the ball in the red zone. <laughs> I mean, he has hands everywhere else. I think I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm more worried about Philip Rivers' accuracy. That's why you want a big guy like Mike Williams or Gates in there in the red zone. Yeah, and I mean, the guy's fast, too. I've got a lot of shares of Mike Williams uh, where I could. You know, I mean, there was – I swear, almost every single league I was in and had that San Diego homer in it, and I could not get a charger to save my life except for one league where I got uh, Melvin Gordon. In the first round, so which I like, I like that. But I mean, I'd only really like Melvin Gordon and Mike Williams on that team. Everybody else, and of course Keenan Allen. I mean, he's going to be very productive this year as well. But I really, I was down on him until Hunter Henry went down. That changed I'll, it for me. I was like, no red zone. There won't be any red zone. Yep. Um, okay, so on to the next one. Should I try to trade Joe Mixon? For Doug Baldwin, Conman82 asks. Mike, I would think? not. I am trying to avoid and trade Doug Baldwin now while he still has name value. That's where I'm at with Doug Baldwin. Seattle, I don't know if anybody paid attention to much of what was happening on that team in the preseason, but that team looks like a dumpster fire waiting to happen. I've got them as my highest, like they're ranked. 27 or something like that right now for me. Um, I'm just not excited about Doug Baldwin. I'm not excited about Russell Wilson. I'm kind of excited about Chris Carson just because I like his potential. Although I don't think he can hold up because I feel like that guy's highly injury prone. So I'd say no. I like Joe Mixon's chances a lot more this year. Plus, I just don't like trading running backs for wide receivers. You know, I don't mind doing that if if you're heavy at running back and you need a wide receiver. I have no problem at all. But purely based on the position scarcity, like what we're talking about, running backs are in demand and they always will be. And especially right now when you have things happening like this Le'Veon, Le'Veon Bell incident and um, or issue rather. So I wouldn't. If you really want to get rid of Joe Mixon, I would go after a better wide receiver than Doug Baldwin. 
I would wait till Monday before I did anything with Joe Mixon because I have him pretty high this week against Indianapolis. Uh, the guy should be able to go off. So I would wait till Monday or Tuesday to try to trade Joe Mixon and go for something way better than Baldwin because at that point he probably won't have much value. All right. I love the answer. Um, so Sandman25 asks Doyle or ASJ, ASJ for standard tight end? Uh, give me Jack Doyle with Andrew Luck back. You know, mm, I think I might have to go ASJ. I think I, I'm, I'm, I don't love Doyle, and they've added Ebron there. Um, I think ASJ is going to see his fair share of targets. So I have the two of them close, but I think ASJ is going to play a bigger part in that offense than what Doyle is for the Colts. See, and I just, I mean, Mercedes Lewis had what, a three touchdown game last year and then a two touchdown game last year. And then I believe like four more receptions <laughs> the entirety of the rest of the year. It just doesn't seem like that's a team that uses their tight end very much. Uh, having ASJ there, he is a pretty big target. Mercedes Lewis was also a pretty big target, though. So I don't know. I don't really see much production. I la- give me, Give me the guy who's on Indianapolis, although I do have. Eric Ebron ranked pretty high. Okay, that's fair. Um, and his second question is, pick two, Barber, Miller, I assume he means Lamar Miller, Keelan Cole, Golden Tate, and Crabtree. And I assume this is still standard. So who are you going here? Um, For me in this one, I believe I'm going to go with a Barber and Tate mix uh, because, oh, I don't know, Lamar Miller, though. Led, I've been looking at this question about yeah two or three hours ago, and I was thinking about it pretty tough trying to figure out what I wanted to do, and I just – man. So here's my question there with Peyton Barber. I do like Peyton Barber on the season, but they don't have Wilson, and they're playing the Saints, which the Saints have a pretty decent defense. So you're not worried about Tampa not being able to move the ball? I, yeah. I kind of am. I'm kind of worried about how Tampa is another dumpster fire team for me. I mean, they're going to be coming out there with Ryan know. Fitzpatrick. I think they're going to be like like a top-end team as far as offense. I mean, at least they were towards the end of the season. I mean, it's, you know, I mean yeah, <laughs> they got Ryan Fitzpatrick out there. But I think a little bit after that, I think they'll be fine. You know, Bar- Barber, Godwin, if Deshaun Jackson is able to put a chip on his shoulder and, you know, proves that he still has got something, you know, and then Evans is Evans. He's going to see the targets. And then they got a OJ Howard, which is a stud and then braid, which is, we know what he does with, with whoever's throwing him the ball. They just paid him a bunch of money. So I, I think they're, they're really good offense. I, I do like it. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree with you guys here. So who's the, the question here was pick two out of these barber, Lamar Miller, Keelan Cole, Golden Tate, and Crabtree. Uh, Mike went Barber and Tate, and this is in standard, mind you. Um, I think that I'm actually going to have to go Miller and probably Crabtree because I, I think do that like he Crabtree a lot I, this week. I think he has the best chance of finding the end zone, which matters a lot more in standard. I'm going to go Miller Cole here. Okay. I like I like that um, also. That that would have been my other one. I, I, I thought that that's where you were going to go. Like I just felt that that that's what you were going to say. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I, just, I think I I love Keelan Cole. I like um, Crabtree too. He usually gives that like in the you know, but I don't I know in the new offense. The I, I, he my should. gut feeling is that I is that he finds finds the end zone this game. Find some pay dirt this weekend. Yeah, but I love Cole also. So for me, it would either be Miller Cole or Miller Crabtree. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, Jobs, dirty. Yo, Mike, you got another question for us? I got Cheesy Bread 305 again. He says, thoughts on Corey Clement being this year's Chris Thompson with J Train's terrible knees and Darren Sproul's age. I like it. I like it a lot. Not Chris Thompson, but 
Chris Tom light, but yes. Yeah, so, I uh, I wouldn't count on anything near the kind of production that Chris Thompson gave you. And, you know, we want to get Wentz back. I expect Wentz to be there week two. But I also expect – I I expect Ajayi to – have a big season. I I don't think he gets injured this season. I'm not as worried as everyone else is. Did you throw up in your mouth a little bit when you said that? <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I did not. Oh man. No, I didn't. Well, not. I I think that Peterson, regardless, we know who Duck Peterson is, and he doesn't use one back. You know, so um, I I think there's still space for a Corey Clement, and I think he he still carves out a role. So yeah, I. Chris Thompson light, um, not Chris Thompson top ten. Chris Thompson before he got injured, no, <laughs> but Chris Thompson light, sure. He can give you some games in the PPR. He can give you anywhere between nine to twelve points in a week to week basis. I think he can average, you know, about ten points. You know, which is about you know somewhat flex worthy in a bye week situation. Other than that, I think you're counting on too much. Where is Steve with my hype train uh, <laughs> noise? Because if you look at almost every single one of my teams, they all have one thing that's in common, and that's that I got this guy so late in the draft. Love it. <clears throat> I love his situation. I love everything that he's going to do right there. I just I, – I hate Jay Ajayi. I don't feel like Jay Ajayi is at all a serviceable back. Oh, yeah. There it hey. is. My train. Let's go. Yes. So hop on it. Get your shares of Corey Clement now because here in about three weeks, he's going to have that starting job. You heard it here first. Woo! Woo! Oh, boy. I could not disagree more. But. <laughs> <laughs> Man, he brought up the train for Corey I Clement. I know. I know. He brought up oh, the I train. I love Corey Clement this year. I, you know. I might go grab him in a couple leagues, but I, I I don't see it. The path isn't as clear to me. But I also believe in Jay Ajayi, so I yeah, know that, that should be where you're like, man, I need to look at myself <laughs> here and say that a few times. I believe in Jay Ajayi, and then you go, I do. I can't say that out loud. I can't do that. Uh, I'm I'm not as worried as everyone else is. Oh man, <laughs> I'm I'm not as worried, but I'm still not. As high on him as I have been in the past, you know, he definitely hurt my heart in some in some ways on some teams, you know. But what about your boy Des Bryant in a twelve team non PPR? You stashing him? Um, it depends on bench size and and what your roster makeup is. And it looks to me like Casper eighty five seventy two has four decent wide receivers ahead of mm-hmm. him. Yeah. Um, he's got Hill, Hogan, he's got Gordon, he's got Robbie Anderson. So, mm. my my question is, who would you give up for him? You know, do you have right. space to stash him? If you have if you have space, sure, um, that's not a terrible stash. But I also think that there's people that are probably on your waiver wire that I would rather have than Des, Des Bryant. That could be equally as productive. Um, this season equal upside and are going to be starting from week one. So there's, there's no guarantee that we're going to see Des this year. And if we do see him, that he's going to be, that he's, you know, I'm a cowboy fan. Right. So yeah. It's painful to say, but that's why I started with you. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. yeah. yeah so was... I'd say look elsewhere. I dropped my only share of Des well, in my, yeah. out of my 10 leagues. I dropped him to pick up um, Wilkins who happened to be there. And a 12 team, you know, you know, maybe you know it's a non PPR. So if he if he can get in a a situation where he scores touchdowns, as if he somehow you know goes to Green Bay, you know <laughs> that might be a nice situation for him. If he somehow goes to Patriots, you know that might be a decent situation for him in the red zone. Um, but yeah, until we know more, I I don't know. Dirty jobs. Can you help Casper eighty five seventy two? So for me, uh, I don't believe that he's worth stashing, and here's why. Because if, let's say, so the only reason we're going to see this guy hit the field this year, right, is if one of these top 40 guys over here on the rankings drop. If somebody there gets hurt, then somebody will have to be desperate enough to go out and pay Des Bryant to come on their team. 
he's already late to the party. He's going to have to learn this whole new system. I mean, is he? I just don't feel like he's worth a stash. I mean, maybe if you're in a keeper league or something like that where you can keep him next year in a new system, then yes. But I just don't feel like he's the guy that can come in, has the intelligence and the capability to pick up a new offense, be able to go out there, do the things he needs to do to be productive for fantasy. So what you're saying is he should have accepted the lifetime supplies of free cap crab cakes uh, that the Ravens offered him. Uh, And and we'd be talking about, you know, picking him there instead of Crabtree there or something like that. Why not in Baltimore? Because, good God, he would just, I mean, just explode. That would be perfect. Why didn't he like Baltimore? I I don't know. I don't get that deal. Joe Flacco. I <laughs> uh, sorry, Lindsay. Okay, sorry, Lindsay. <laughs> I know that's your boy. I know Flacco's your guy. Uh, well, dirty jobs. You got another question for out of the sack, dude? I'm excited because oh, it's not. I thought it was Mini Mall Impact. Oh. Guy who I always call Mini Mall Impact. But yeah. no, we got Lanky Hut. We got Fab Budget for Connor. And or Samuels and opinions on short long term with Bell doing his thing. I feel like we kind of covered this a little bit right. earlier. Yeah, we you did. You know, yeah. Just I, hit it, hit it, hit it quick though. He's a, he's asking what what should you spend on the Fab? So really, the first thing you have to address here is when you think that Bell is going to come back. Um, you know, his agent came out today and made it seem like maybe we don't see Bell until week ten. I think that would be. A pretty unintelligent move on Bell's part to do that. He's kind of oh, showing. No. He's kind of he still show- gets paid. No, he doesn't. He loses nine hundred thousand. Yeah, million. I mean, he's going to lose six million dollars if he doesn't report all year. Um, at least you know. Um, but I mean, you know, he if if he doesn't report up to what game, you know, what week ten. That's like what close to six. You know, what what is he? Uh, it's 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 eight hundred and sixty five thousand a week. Yeah. Yeah, so and yeah. <laughs> the Steelers can play hardball and they can rescind his offer. And they so don't that's that's eight million his. basically if he's willing to hold out up to week eight or no no sorry week ten like his agent is suggesting that his client could do. Uh, but hey, I mean he's hey, got endorsement yeah. money. He's got endorsement money. It's yep. these, these football players are, it's not like the, it's not like the fast, you know, the internet is, is real. It's strong <laughs> and it is undefeated. Uh, and there's so many ways that these guys are able to get money via, you know, just communicating these ways. Uh, I mean, social media, uh, and so many different avenues. So, um, if he's able to sit out, then yeah, I'd still be able to, you know, I'd, Probably spend maybe this is high, but maybe about ten percent of the budget you no know, on on him. Yeah, I'd go ten or twenty percent even probably, because he's going to be impact right away. Someone's going to spend more than ten, so I guess if you really want him, then yep. you probably have to spend like twenty. I would say twenty percent for Connor and fifteen percent for Samuels. I like Sam. I Samuels passes my eye test more than the others, so I know that's not the conventional wisdom right now. But I think that Samuels would win that job over a period of a few weeks. I think you could get him for like three percent of your budget, though. I think so too. I think you could get him for so much cheaper because yeah. I don't really feel like a lot. I mean, I feel like I could go hop in any league that I'm in right now and still grab Samuel. Yeah, like he's sitting there on on. He, I'm in so many leagues. He's well, uh, well, no, the dynasty ones. Obviously, he's he's yeah, taken. He's gone. Yeah, he's gone. He's gone, obviously. But mm-hmm. the, the redrafts, he's he's just sitting there, just like, hey, someone play with me, you know, like you roster me, you know. It's he's 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 looking sad. But when he's going to be on the field, I I I do think that he can be more efficient, you know, with his time. Um, so I, I definitely would roster him, and I spend about three percent. If you want to be aggressive, like Lucas, you know, spend a little bit more. Hey, I'm more power to you. You know, he he's a guy you want to go get. Um, by the eye test for sure. Uh, well, yeah, that's that's about that's about as much I got. Yeah, just you got to know your league too. Know what kind of people you got in there. Like if you got a Wilson twenty seven Steelers fan, he right. might be wanting both of those guys for about ten percent of P. For so sure. 
something to that effect. But I mean, Fab's tough. Fab is hard to give advice on without knowing everybody in every situation. Yeah, basically with Fab, you got to be aggressive. If you want a guy, just be aggressive. If you really yep. want a guy, now we're not going to tell you spend ten percent of it. If you really wanted him and you're like, hey, you only told me to spend. No, if you really want him, spend 30 percent of your budget if you really want him. But we're, I'm not advising that you do that. <laughs> you know, uh, Lucas is the one that it feels the most strong, you know, and then O'Connor, I think we're we're across the board. We, we feel the same about him. All right. Uh, dirty jobs. You got the next question for us out of the sack. Yes, we've got mini mall impact. Nice. <laughs> it's football season again. Oh, yeah. With Gates returning, I feel like I'm fading on Mike Williams. Would you rather DJ Moore or Michael Gallup over Williams? I would not. On the season? How are you feeling about this, Lucas? Mm, that's tough. That's tough. Because on the season, I think that both DJ Moore and Mike Gallup mm-hmm, have mm-hmm. a shot at being wide, the mm-hmm. wide receiver one for their team. Yeah. And I think no matter what Mike Williams does, he will not overtake Keelan, uh, Keenan Allen. So I think season long that I have probably DJ Moore. I think DJ Moore is probably the bet as long as his off the field issues don't. Keep him off that's, the field. That's where I'm like, gee, I can't agree with that because of that. I do like Michael Gallup a lot this year. Mm-hmm. I think he's kind of walking into a yeah perfect situation. You've got Dak Prescott going into his third year. You've got a angry, angry Ezekiel Elliott sitting in that backfield. I mean, you can see steam coming off that guy's helmet. Yeah. So I don't know. I really like Gallup a lot. But I, I don't know. Mike Williams, to me, is going to be the guy who scores the most touchdowns in this group. I don't I don't feel like Gates scares me at all. I don't know. I, th- I think Gallup um, – I, I mean, Gates definitely scares me a little bit. You know, I think he's going to be used in the red zone. He's going to be taken away from everybody there because he's going to be used somewhere in the red zone. Across the rest of the – you know, I, I don't know. Across the you know the rest of the roster, I, I don't think he affects maybe the receivers as much, but yeah, I mean both of those guys, I, I think I like a little bit more than Mike Williams. I would say just because their road to number one is a little bit easier, you know. Yeah. So uh, I definitely agree with Lucas there, you know, um, and and Dirty Jobs like I, I but you know, I, I I think I'm higher on Gallup, but on all you know between all three of these guys. Um, I, I I think he has the opportunity to you know to to be able to take take up that Des Bryant uh, role. So um, I, I'm going Gallup here you know, out of the three. All right, all right, Lucas, you got the next question for us out of this sack. It's it's you know it's looking it's still a lot of questions in there, but I I know. Little, you know so. We got Coco Pax coming up next, and he needs two wide receivers and a flex. He has Demarius Thomas, Allen Robinson, Cooper Cup, Corey Davis, Crabtree, Aguilar, Burkhead, and Corey Clement in a PPR league. Hoos, what do you got? Uh, you said, uh, sorry, read those off one for me. I heard Aguilar, Corey Clement. Um, so the wider, so he needs he needs two wide receivers and a flex, and the wide receivers are Demarius Thomas. So let's let's just pick two wide receivers first: Demarius Thomas, Allen Robinson, Cooper Cup, Corey Davis, Crabtree, Aguilar. So there's six there. He needs two. Uh, I'm gonna say for this is for week one. I'm gonna go Corey Davis and Aguilar here. Um, <sighs> Okay. Just because Demarius Thomas, I mean Sanders has been seeing a lot of targets. I don't. Yes. I think Aguilar is gonna be. He's looked good with Foles, you know. I mean, when you know, and and that's kind of where I was a little off of of, of Aguilar, uh, because when we did see him do very well, it was mostly with Foles. Uh, but he's gonna be with Foles, so I'm I'm not straying away from him right now. Uh, and yeah, I, 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 these are good options, but. I think for your week one, these are the guys I would go with. 
for me, it's Cooper Cup and Allen Robinson. Uh, I, yeah. or, uh, sorry, sorry, Cooper Cup and Michael Crabtree. Yeah. I just like Crabtree's opportunity too much this week. And Cooper Cup against Oakland, another just, yeah, I feel like he's going to score maybe even twice. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm Crabtree and Aguilar here are the two I would go with. Um, I don't love Foles, but with um, all the injuries that they have, Alshon Jeffrey, et cetera, I think Aguilar is going to be a focal point. And we talked earlier about Crabtree, and then we have for his flex, we could play one of those other four wide receivers, or we could have Burkhead um, or Corey Clement. It is a PPR league. Um, I mean, for I, me, Burkhead and Corey Clement are both out of this conversation. Really? Because I think I would go I'm just, Burkhead. I'm just Burkhead's eliminating. Hurt. Well, no, he he he's he'll be fine for week one. He's he is not a hundred percent, but he is supposed to be fine for week one. Yeah, um, I don't so. like that. I don't like hamstrings. I don't like yeah. week one. He'll be okay. Like, nope, for me, I'm out. And Corey Clement, he's not going to explode till week three. We just had this conversation. So I would go Burkhead, but it sounds like if you wanted to go with um, maybe Corey Davis as the third wide receiver here, go Crabtree, Aguilar, and Corey Davis, sounds like that might be the consensus. I'm not, like a huge, I'm not a huge fan of Allen Robinson. No, me neither. Uh, no. Demarius Thomas has not been. Thomas uh, is easy, like lazy way to play fantasy football. I would say the the lazy way to, 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 to pick this would be Thomas and Burkhead. But there's so many anomalies in <laughs> like given those, these guys situations that it could go wrong. So I like, you know, I, I like Aguilar. And Corey Davis a little bit more, just given Corey Davis is supposed to be the number one on the on the offense. Aguilar is probably going to be the number one on the offense. And although Demarius Thomas is supposed to be, it it looks like Sanders might be a little bit more favored. And same thing with Allen Robinson. I think Anthony Miller might be a little bit more favored or or Trey Burton or those other guys. And I'm not a big believer. Sorry, Nick and Mitch Trubisky. At all, you know, yeah, so I, I don't know if he's able to, to 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 make the rest of those options look very well. Uh, what do we got next? What do we got next? Um, Our Summers says stream Andy Dalton versus Indy or play Pat Mahomes versus Chargers. He's projected to win. Thanks in advance. You're welcome in advance. I'm going to Andy here. Yeah. Me too. Yep. Same here. I don't like the Chargers defense. I like Patrick Mahomes just fine. I just don't like that Chargers defense. They are nasty. You, you, you don't like playing against them. No. 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 Yeah. No. That's so exactly we, it. We, we, I we love do like the Chargers. We, we do like the Chargers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, we, we like, like the Chargers. We always play them. Yeah. 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 They're they're second in my um in my draft rankings. Yeah, they're up there with me. I think they're fifth or something like that. But I didn't still. like their. I didn't like their playoff schedule. So in my uh, Yahoo League, which gives crazy, silly points to defense, like 15, 20 points a game you can get with your defense, I have stacked the Rams with Detroit. Um, and I'm excited to see Detroit. Detroit's go, a good one. Yeah, go pick up Detroit uh, if they're not owned right now. They play Sam Darnold week one, <laughs> and that should be a feast. Um, should be a good one. So the next one going here is Brady's a bitch. Please help me pick a second flex, half PPR, Carson, Cole, James, Connor. Uh, Give me Connor this weekend. At Cleveland. Cleveland's defense is not bad. Cleveland's defense is not bad, but I mean – Connor's just going to get used. He's going to get Le'Veon Bell style usage. Uh, I, I disagree, and I think that the Broncos' run defense was pretty weak last year. So I might go with Chris Carson here, considering they don't have a lot of other places to go with the ball. Oh, Chubb and Miller are just going to eat Carson alive. 
I bet you I bet you Seattle looks like a high school football team this weekend. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, they're not facing the, the I mean, I think defensively, even though they lost pieces, they're not facing much. I think they're they're gonna be fine. Um and they got Russell Wilson at the helm. They got Russell Wilson at the helm, so you know, I, I wouldn't count that team out ever. You know, so, they, so they, who would you take here? Who would you take here? I think I still take um Cole here though. Um <sighs> Okay. Yeah, so I this didn't this help split. at all. If I had to, if I had if I had oh man, that's tough. So this is obviously a very tough decision that you have yeah. here if we're all leaning somewhere different. You know, and, and check our rankings, that's gonna be posted more than likely by tomorrow morning if it's not posted already. Um, on our website, uh, sleepwire.com, our, I believe so. They should be posted um, by tomorrow. It's week one. Yeah, they should be there. Uh, we're we're just waiting like on PPR your rankings, people. actually. Who's, get those PPR rankings in, Hoos, and I'll post it. I, 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 I <laughs> but maybe I, I, I didn't. Just so maybe, yeah, I'm gonna send them in. Then you, you guys will have them now that uh, you know Steve is is calling me out on that. Yeah, I, I said I said the standard. So you guys have standard. Look, look, some of you guys didn't do standard, all right? So I actually took standard. the time. I ended up doing standard on my lunch break. Okay, well, there you go. All right, cool. What's that? All, right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, back to the sack. Back to the sack. <laughs> back to the sack. Lucas, you got another question for us out this sack. So PC117 <gasps> asks Doug Baldwin or Corey Davis. And... I think I have to go Baldwin here as long yeah. as the news um, is that he's good to go, which is what it looks like. Yeah, I'm, I'm still going, going with Corey Davis. I don't like Doug Baldwin at all this year. I just don't like it. I, he's, I think he said himself that he's playing today at 85%. So, yeah, but I mean, the, yeah, I, I don't know if you looked at that, that clip. But I think Corey Davis is better here. Well, uh, here's the thing. I don't know if you looked at that clip or not, but when he was talking, you know, he was kind of – first off, he was kind of like in joking fashion, and then he was just talking as a player. Like when you woke – like, Mike, you woke up at like, what, 65% today. Like you, like you didn't wake up at even 85%. You know, and these are professional football players. You know, at the end of, end of the day, 85%. I'll take 85% of Doug Baldwin – when that's what he's rating himself at, when on the week to week basis, these guys get nicked up. These guys get hurt, you know, then they just muster through practice. They muster through the rest of the year, you know, the, the, the 16 weeks, you know, 17 weeks, you know, however long, you know, if they're into the playoffs, they're just playing out there, just trying to get by. Most of them are not at even 85%. So give me Doug Baldwin. He's the most efficient player in the league. You know, by target base, you know, he, you know, he's, I, I'd still love Doug Baldwin here. I'm, I'd start Doug Baldwin over Corey Davis in, I, I like Corey Davis quite a bit. Give me Corey Davis against Miami and instead of Doug Baldwin on the road, week one in, in Denver. No, thank you. Dude, Seattle doesn't even get good till like week eight every year. Yeah, this is true. This is true. This is just, true. I mean, Denver doesn't. Denver is is not as scary as as they been in the in the past. I, I will say they're uh, better against a run, not as 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 good in you know in the past passing game as far as secondary. So you'll see. But I'm I I believe you. I believe you. That that's your squad. <laughs> you know, uh, you're never quite too wrong. You told us C.J. Anderson was a, a dirty lie. I and, said and he, last year they're going to be trash because of their quarterback was so bad. Yeah, yeah. And this year I'm excited, dude. I mean, I'm pumped to see what the Broncos can do. Yeah, so that's 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 definitely nice. That's definitely nice. Now Hild Mac is that Hild Mac? Yeah, Hild D Mac. Hild D Mac flex position. Chris Carson, Seattle, or Carlos Hyde versus Pittsburgh. Uh, it's a PPR league. What do we like, Lucas? Uh, this isn't even close for me. It's Carlos Hyde. The yep. boy has hands, and even if it was standard, I would be taking Hyde. So, Carlos Hyde's my boy. I'm high on him this season, Same. especially yep. especially for a ninth round pick or whenever you were getting him early. Yeah, pretty easy. We're gonna move on to Brady. What, what were you gonna say? Dirty? I was gonna say, and he's at home. <laughs> 
That's all I was going to ask. Yeah, and he's at home. And he's at home. So Brady Z13, two running back slots to fill half point PPR. Bilal Pau versus the Lions. Or Hyde versus the Steelers. He's got Jamal. Williams as well versus the Bears and Peyton Barber versus the Saints. Thanks, this one's guys. easy. This one's easy for me. I don't know about you guys. I'm Hyden Williams. Those are mine. Also, Hyden Williams. Uh, Hyden Williams would be for myself as well. All right, uh, Lucas, you're gonna take the next one for us. Next one, it looks like on two in a row. Just throwing I know. that out there. We gotta okay, <laughs> so we gotta find another one that we're not gonna agree on. Um, who is the best kicker to stream this week? Oh man, and this hurts uh, Jake Seeley here in this question. Hey, you know. So it, here, maybe I'll help him with the answer. <laughs> kicker. Throw a dart and pick one. That's how. There I you go. My there you go. He That's would appreciate that, that answer. <laughs> Well, no, let's... No. In, in all respect, though, I do look at kickers and I do take them somewhat serious because they, they do score points. So you have to go out there and do somewhat of research. I think Lambo did incredibly well, given uh, he came on later, I believe, he you know, uh, in the year. And he, his, his game averages were pretty well. Uh, Vinatieri is good. He's got a good um, he's got a good uh, uh, schedule this week as well. Suck up's another good one. I think I'd probably lean suck up here, though. Um, that's suck up is definitely a good pick. Um, I think that I would lean. I think I would lean with Graham Gano. Hmm. It's a tough schedule. I mean, I mean, at least by at least by you know, um, ESPN has. Graham Gano facing the toughest schedule on kickers against kickers. Well, he's he's just talking about to stream for this week. Right. No, that's what I'm saying. And for this week. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think that... If that means anything to you. I mean, again, we're spending... Maybe people are laughing that we're spending this much time on kickers. But, hey, we're trying to help someone. Okay? <laughs> hey, we're trying to help. Yeah. So, <laughs> I think Carolina is able to move the ball against Dallas. So I think that they have a lot of opportunity to get it down in the red zone and... He's, you know, he's going to have a few, two or three field goal opportunities, I believe. All right, throw a dart, Gano, and suck up. So, <laughs> throw a dart. <laughs> so, throw a dart, basically. Yes. Uh, next question, dirty jobs. We got DMC two. He says twelve man standard. Who should I flex? Carry on, Josh Gordon, CJ Anderson, Kelvin Benjamin, Robbie Anderson, or Sammy Watkins? Thank you in advance. You're welcome in advance, DMC two. <laughs> Hmm. Robbie Anderson for me. Robbie I Anderson. <laughs> I was thinking Robbie Anderson too, yeah. right there, because he, to me, he has probably the best opportunity to score. Yeah. Out nice uh, schedule this week as well. Yep. Uh, Hill D. Mack wants to know if he should go Jimmy or Trey Burton. I like both of these guys. Mike, dirty jobs. I'm- I'm going with Trey Burton. I, I, that Chicago defense scares me a little bit. Going Graham here. You got to go Graham. You got to go Jimmy. They don't have anyone else to throw to in the red zone. They do the I can ask Professor Chris and make this Steven because he'll tell you about how Jimmy Graham will never get targeted by Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Uh, I think we saw how that happened in the preseason. You know, it's his preseason. Jimmy yeah. Graham still Jeremy Graham. And Jimmy. look, this I was one of the people that was with Chris. You know, I was definitely with Chris. You know, I had my I had my sign up, you know, with you know Aaron Rodgers doesn't like, you know, I had my clever signs up. I you know, several of them, right, that I had posted. But 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 Jimmy Graham is a red zone factor. He's a guy that's gonna get targeted. Russell Wilson did use him. Maybe Russell Wilson didn't use him as much as he should have used him because he kind of fell off a cliff a little bit towards the end of the season. But maybe Aaron Rodgers uses him a little bit more. I'm willing to gamble a little bit more on Jimmy Graham now. I'm liking more of Jimmy Graham now, picking up a couple shares of him, especially over Trey Burton. I'm not high on Trey Burton at all, especially look at the quarterback. You know, I I think Anthony Miller is probably the best. Probably going to be the most – targeted guy there i feel like 
I don't know why. I just have a feeling. So I got a hot take for you. Jimmy Graham will finish as a top three tight end this year. Ooh. Ooh. That's hot. That's hot. Incorrect. Ooh. Yeah, you said that. <laughs> Did, didn't you say something to me about uh, when I loved Todd Gurley last year, too? Did you tell no, me I was, I was on the Todd Gurley that? Man. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody wants to be wrong on that Todd Gurley channel. Uh, I was, dude. I'll I'll be the first to admit when I was wrong. I loved Todd Gurley last year. I did. I remember stating as much several times, and I my draft would you show should, that you should. Love I got him in like the third round in so many leagues. You should love some Jimmy this year. I don't. I just you don't. Should. I I do. I am. That's I am higher point. than Chris is on him because That's I'm like, dude. Point. If anybody's going to be able to suck in those targets, it is going to be Jimmy Graham. Like he's I do six, like the potential. He's he's, he's six seven and can catch. Yeah, he's huge, like, dude, and he can catch. He and is he's mean. going to be the red zone man yeah. for Aaron Rodgers this year. Yeah, I can see it happening. I could. I actually have him. <laughs> Let me see where I got him ranked. If it's outside your top three, you're wrong. Unless it's <laughs> yeah, he, he it's, actually is top four, eight for him. Ew. Oh, gross. Okay, we got um, where where do you have him? Eight. So you have, spot. yeah, so I have mean, but that's I also this made. week. Oh, okay. Oh, I don't know. Right, I, I, I'm gonna check them where I have them this week. Uh, I'm not sure where I have them this week. I gotta pull that up, but pulling up where I have them season. season. Well, okay. we're, while you're pulling that up, we'll, we're going to move on to the next question. Uh, Lucas, you got it in front of you because I, I do. This one's my place. Wilson, <laughs> twenty-seven. Our yeah. man. Our With guy. possible risk of Le'Veon Bell out all year, what do you think I can get for him at this point in any redraft league? Let me stop you right there and say, do not trade Le'Veon Bell right now. No. You are the you're the guy that bought Bitcoin and then it tanked, and you yeah. sold it on the down. Like, <laughs> don't do not Perfect. Yeah, Wilson. Don't perfect analogy. Don't. Hold yeah. on to Le'Veon Bell. Uh, Bell for McCoy trade. What would you do? I mean, that's trading one bad situation for another. I would not. I would hold on to Le'Veon Bell. Also, Ingram for Bell. Ingram's out four weeks. I mean, you might as well wait those four weeks and see if Bell comes back and then see if the guy wants to do the trade then. Dude, go uh, get Connor. Go get Connor. Yeah, just go go get Samuel, man. Yeah, be Jay, oh, yeah or get Samuel. It'll be a lot cheaper, a lot cheaper. And he's going to be available. Someone probably already picked up Connor. Yeah. So, yep. Um, yeah. I I had this whole speech written up ready to answer this question, and the Bitcoin analogy trumped it and wins, and I agree 100%. Don't get rid of Bell. You're not going to get the value you need out of that guy. He's a first-rounder. Now, Wilson 22nd continues with his question. That is not a question, but more of a statement. I know we have said this before, but people tend to forget. Sleeper Wire does a fantastic job. What do you do for help and support? This world is a better place with you in it. Exclamation point, guys. Just another tap on the back as a friendly reminder that our hearts never forget the good ones. Number one fan, Wilson27. We love you, Wilson27. Yeah. Yes, you are uh-huh. number one fan for sure. That's, that's our boy. We, we appreciate you. We appreciate you. Uh, we're going to go on to the next question. And let's not forget, guys, if you want to call us we haven't got a call yet yeah this is 320-247-5337-320-247-5337 or 320-24-SLEEP all right next question is from big blue 212 he says uh no that's not the question actually it says deleted i'm sorry he says deleted (laughs) yeah our next one our next one is uh by smooth 006. Yeah, that's a nice what, one. What type of running back can I get if I trade Keenan Allen? My current running backs are Lamar Miller and Drake. 12 man, non PPR. Mm, non PPR is tough. I think you could go after, you know, maybe someone is down. A lot of people are down and they're, they're getting nervous about Dalvin Cook for some reason. Yeah. So I would yeah. go after like Dalvin Cook or Hunt. I think uh, yeah, Hunt, Hunt's a little higher than a, 
in rankings for a lot of people than Dalvin. Dalvin's kind of fallen. Um, Maybe a Joe Mixon and something, uh, you know. I think I'd just go for a one. I, I, I think Joe Mixon's not quite good enough for me. I think the worst that I would go that I would allow would be Christian oh, Howard. I think we have a phone call. Yeah, you oh. do. You want to take it? Yes, sure. we do. No, we don't want to. We don't want to see this guy. <laughs> Yes, welcome caller. What's up, sleeper? Hello. Um, I actually I had a, a question posted by SW Steve. My uh, my name is Time to Win. Um, up, but I just wanted to be your first caller here. So hey, oh, yeah, you um, are. We appreciate you, man. Yeah, I heard you mention it, so I figured I'd give you a call. Um, the question was: I have an offer on the table from the Lev Bell owner. Um, he's kind of freaking out. I've been asking him for Mark Ingram. <laughs> And now he's offering me Mark Ingram straight up for Alfred Morris. Yes. Yes. Take, take that trade. Can. Yes. Take that. Yep. I would take it and run. Yeah, I thought so. I thought so too. So then I have to drop somebody before uh, week one, and my mm-hmm. drop is probably going to be either Alfred Morris or Aaron Jones. So um, he wants Aaron Jones as well with Alfred Morris. That should be a no brainer too, though, right? Um, well, I don't like but. to the give. two of them for Ingram. Well, he's saying he's going to have to drop someone regardless. I still rather drop him, right? Just so I can possibly go out there and get him the following week. Because he, look, now now that turns into a one week suspension, right? So if you drop him right before the games, there's going to be guys that are people are clamoring for because it's week one of waivers. No one's going to be picking up Aaron Jones, you know. The, Probably no one's probably going to be picking up. But if there's someone you didn't want to burn your waiver, you know, turn on Aaron Jones, you could probably pick him right back up if if you have a if you didn't make a a two for one trade and freed up a roster spot or something like that, or if you just wanted to go out there and get him again, he'd be there for you. So I'd probably be right. confident, I guess, just letting him go closer to the. I wouldn't let him go right now. Um, it depends on the league. I, I know ESPN. I think what you have to let him go like on Saturday or something like that for them to not be eligible to be pick up on Sunday or something. Uh, so I would wait as long as I could to drop him. you know? Um, well, I think he was saying that. So is this guy asking for a two for one trade? He's wanting Aaron Jones. Yes. And- yeah. Yeah. That's uh, I kind of, I may, I worded that kind of confusing way. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, yeah, but I'm still yeah, saying I'd so drop I'm gonna, him. I wouldn't, I wouldn't well, want to give but, him but, so you wouldn't – well, then that's – but that's the trade for Ingram, though. He's having to trade away Aaron Jones and Morris. Oh, he won't He won't do it straight right. up, you're saying. Right. Oh, well, if you won't do it straight up, then, yeah, just do it. I mean, you get it. Yeah, just get it over with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we're <laughs> Ingram. That's yeah. not a bad pickup. Yeah, get Ingram. Okay, cool. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. yeah. No, no, Take no, care, man. Thanks for calling. Thanks for listening. First sleeper right, wire yeah. caller we'll of the season. Well, in the uh, official we, season. In the official season. There we go. The, the official season. season. Okay. Long off one. The Long NFL off kicks one. off tomorrow night. That means Sleeper Wire kicks off the night before. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lucas, you got another question from us out of the sack. We do. And I was just going to finish up the other one. I think what we said was uh, Howard or Christian yes. McCaffrey would be yep. the lowest we would dip as a running back mm-hmm. since you are a little bit in need in a 12-man. You uh, you need to strengthen that up a little bit there, Smooth. Um, so the next one that we have... Um, from w- the mix list. Okay, this is from mix the mix list. Okay. Uh, yeah. Bell owner here, would you roll Connor, Morris, Clement, or Mike Williams? Flex... Standard currently Collins and Carson as my starters. Um, I would pro. This is one that I would actually probably. I probably would go Connor here. Yep, same here. So it it would be Connor here for for all of us. Yep. Um, w dis PPR who dis who dis <laughs> uh, PPR Marquise Goodwin. Versus the Vikings or Robert Woods versus the Raiders, um, posted by Atlanta Falcons at Atlanta Falcons. I think <laughs> I would go Marquise Goodwin here. What about you guys? I would too. Actually, I would go Robert Woods against the Raiders. Yeah, I I don't not, like the Vikings. You're not curious to see how 
the three-headed wide receiving monster is going to play out there for Goff rather than a, kind of a knowing A little bit, that. but I feel like he'll find Woods. I feel like he found Woods enough last year that he'll be able to find him this year. I really can see Marquise Goodwin not being able to handle uh, Xavier Rhodes um, if that's who, in fact, covers him. I just – I don't like that matchup. I don't like it in Minnesota. I mean, that's a really tough defense to get anything done on. I'm I'm not high on any San Francisco. I think we see old Garoppolo lose his first game this weekend. And, you know, here is where I was going to go ahead and say Goodwin. But I was as I was going to say it was Goodwin, I was going to say it's very close to me. But hearing Mike talk, it was close for me, and I'm going to go Woods now. I agree. I agree 100% with what you said. I'm going to go Woods. Okay, I've been outvoted 2-1. to one. <laughs> They they would like Robert Woods. I'm still not convinced. I'm, I'm not convinced. It was close, but if I have to lean now, I'm leaning Woods because of my argument, which is a very solid one. Because I was, go- I was leaning Goodwin before, but it was very close. So now it's a slightly the other way. You know, it's like a little s- slow drunk man, a little bit leaning a little bit to the, you know, to the right. <laughs> leaning this um, way, leaning that yeah, way. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> you know, but uh, yeah, okay. I'll be out there. Next one. So at Cardinal for life, three wants Who to know. You? He's giving away Pierre Garcon and Amendola to get carry on and Alan Hearns. Is this a good trade? I need feedback. The answer is yes. Yay. Yes. Care, you're Welcome getting the only down. running back. You're getting the only running back in this trade. Who yeah. potentially? <laughs> so I gotta say, I gotta tell you though, I think Legarrette Blunt is going to end the season as the most effective running back for no. the Detroit Lions. No, I, 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 I I'm feeling. Johnson. Yeah, I, I think that they they end up giving him a Joyke Bell role after all is said and done. I think that they they try they, they incorporate all the guys, but at the same time, you know, it, it's still the same offense. You know, the same offense of mine. You know, so and I think that Cooter's. You know, Cooter. They, I think he's he's going to do what he wants to do, um, and I, I think he's. It's not going to be um, blunt just because he he doesn't fit that mold. He doesn't fit that role, um, and I think Carrion is is what Abdullah was supposed to be here, uh, and you know so many other backs was supposed to be. I think he finally fills that role. I feel like uh, but, the same exact way. But <laughs> it is the Lions, and I think a lot of us were high on Amir Abdullah when he first came into the. Yeah, I, we always root, you know, for for these Lions backs because it's a nice offense. It really is, but it's hard to pick them, you know, other than a theoretic and a PPR. But yeah, I want to say Carry On Johnson is a is a guy that I want to target and be happy to have on my team for a nice several weeks and just see what he does for me, even if he doesn't produce the first couple. I feel like Carry On's going to be on a lot of championship rosters, and I have that guy on almost every single team I have. Nice. Uh, I have a lot of carrion, but I also got a, a couple Legarrett Blunt shares, and I'm not upset about it because I got those super late in my drafts. Yeah, see, I feel like I could just go grab Legarrett Blunt in almost every league I'm in right I now. Think, I don't feel like he even got drafted. I think you should go grab him because he's going to put up a couple <laughs> decent weeks, and then you can just trade him to someone desperate for a running back. So I think I would definitely do that. Well, I may just. <laughs> okay. All right. We'll see though. Well, you know, it's all best guess right now, right? Um, hey, we're all right. It's we're, we're all correct at this point. It's not even right. week one. It's we tomorrow. won't know until well, tomorrow, today. tomorrow night. Today, yeah, you know? we won't know anything until well until today. You know, whenever Steve uploads, it, it'll be today. So you guys, listeners, what will be today? Or well, maybe you already saw some football, so we well, won't know until Sunday right now. yeah exactly (laughs) uh so yeah we we yeah we are on on mixler as well so uh speaking of mixler do we have any more questions we do we have some more at osu 496 wants to know if he should go austin hooper oj howard or ricky seals jones 
Oh, I'm gonna go Ricky Seals here. Give me some like RSJ. Me some Ricky Seals. Give me some RSJ. Wow, I thought that I was gonna get a huge argument out of you two when I said Ricky Seal Jones for oh, me no. as well. Across the Uh-oh. board. Across the board. Yep. I feel like right Austin here. Hooper went third in a draft I was in last I didn't, night. I'm I, I didn't. You, dude, that's I didn't get the, hoop, the hype around him. I, I don't understand it. Does can can anybody explain no. to me the Austin Hooper hype? No. Oh. Nope. He's not something? even in my top thirty. Yeah, I, I feel like we missed something collectively as a group because <laughs> yeah. there's so much. I, I've seen him go high, and I'm just like, why? Third yeah. round last night. And that's how I got Christian McCaffrey. I'm like, how in the – what is going on here? I was just I smiling and – You had a troll in I felt like I was on draft, punk. Maybe. Yeah. It's uh, a money so, draft. <laughs> Wait, we're it's all – wow. It's a money yeah. draft. Dude, it's Jesus. for money. Yeah. What? Man. I'm telling you. <laughs> this is insane. Wow. That's some strong stuff. That guy I was on. Maybe need to pass that to the left. You know. I think. Yep. Did you see the picture of that league I dropped? It had yeah. like Alvin Kamara, Leonard Fournette. Uh, yeah, I did see that. That was insane. That was that was that like, I did. Wow. They just kept leaving me great jealous. running backs, and I just kept grabbing them. I'm, I'm like, I just can't stop. That's what you should do. And on to the next one here. We got at Sandman25 wanting to know. Wait a minute. Uh, Hold he, that thought. You got another call. Hang on. Oh, let's take let's take the call. Calls always take priority, guys. So let's yes, take. Yes, they it. do. Go ahead. What's up, caller? Hey, how you doing? Hey, What's doing up, well. Super? How how can we help you? Well, I got a, I got a couple questions, and the first one being, um, I just traded for Dalvin Cook. I got rid of Royce Freeman. And I wanted to know if uh, the Tavius Murray is worth a, uh, a handcuff. Yeah. Yes. I'd say so. Yeah. If you if you have a roster spot, I'm not a huge handcuff fan, but if you are really set at all of your other positions and you have room on your bench, yeah, the Tavius Murray is worth it. Well, I'm also holding uh, Alfred Morris and Matt Brady because my my RB one is uh, and RB two is Cook and Barkley. Should I go and try to get Ingram? Because the Ingram owner only has like Reddick, Freeman as his running back, Marlon Mack. Absolutely. See, see if um, actually I would. Ch- I think I would trade both of the San Francisco running backs to him, so that he can lock up that backfield, and it would save you a headache, and you can have Ingram whenever he comes back, and then you can go pick up the hottest thing on the waiver wire. Right, I still need a kicker because I'm holding those uh, those two roster spots. Uh, you know, I had to drop my kicker for Brady just to have both. Um, well, you you so tree up drop- one if you have you know if you if you send him Morris and and Breda. Yeah. Um, and then you free up a roster spot. You could pick up your kicker. Um, and then if you have an extra roster spot, you could pick up something else. Yeah, I right. think send him that and just tell him, hey, lock up San Francisco's backfield here. You'll get whichever one's better. And then you get Ingram, and it sounds like uh, you're going to have a really strong team. And the last thing I got is I have Parker on the same bench, Devontae Parker. I kind of like Mike Williams better, but long term. I want to know your thoughts on on the two. Well, Parker's not even going to play. Um, last I heard, he might be missing um, possibly a week or two, actually, um, given his finger. Uh, maybe just the week, though. Um, so definitely – yeah, you're definitely going to go with the other guy here. Mike Williams. Um, and long-term, long-term, I think I still gamble on Parker, though, just because they invested so much on him. I don't. Uh, me either. It's, I, I love Mike Williams. He was a first-round draft pick for them last year. Yeah, but how much work is he actually going to get on the week-to-week basis, given Tyrell Williams, Travis Benjamin, I'm not worried just about Antonio either, Gates? Uh, I'm not necessarily worried about them, but they're there. They're vying for targets, and then Keenan Allen's going to be vying for the most. Yeah, but they're they're different players, though. Keenan Allen's he's going to be running very different routes from Mike Williams, and Mike Williams is such a big body. He's six four, you know. He's a big dude, and honestly, I think out, you know, 
I think that we're going to have some people step up for Miami, and I don't see, I don't see Devontae Parker ever being productive. No, no, I no. Either. And I, I look, I don't even like Devontae Parker at all. I'm just saying, <laughs> long term, he has, he, he he's a higher dart throw. I think, um, just because I think that if he turns it on he can still solidify a number two spot with Kenny Stills versus um, Mike Williams at best being, I, 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 I really don't see Mike Williams being like a number two guy. Like I, I see him maybe three or four. I don't see him. Tyrell Williams is the number two there. I, I just, I like him, uh, you know, but I just don't think that he's anything more of a standard piece um you know, red zone target. I don't, I don't see him being much more than that. Maybe towards the end of the season, you see a little bit more. Maybe there, if there's injuries, you see a little bit more, but there's way too many wide receivers. I think, uh, you know, he has a, the other wide receiver has a slightly better path to targets. Okay. 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 We're, 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 we're split on this one. We're, we're clearly split. I love Mike No, Williams. you're not split. So Mike Williams. Is, I, Mike Williams. Mike Williams. Your, yeah. Give Mike Williams. Diego Charger than I, yeah. I you're not, we're Diego. not split at all. You're going Mike Williams. I'm just still arguing from, but <laughs> uh, go Mike Williams by sleeper wire. Cause you got a two for one here. Um, uh, maybe put Devontae Parker on, on radars later on in the season or something. If he does not do so well and you, you see some flashes and you can get it for cheap, then maybe. But other than that, yeah, Mike Williams is a sexy option for week one and for the immediate future for sure. But, you know, later on maybe. Uh, and, and I have one last question for the same team. I guess with that last roster spot, either get Mike Williams or handcuff Murray. We think Hancock and Murray would be more important than the Williams. I have Sanders, Julio Jones, Cooper Cup, and um, so the one other guy. I just I've got the other receiver I have. I think I'd rather have Murray. I like the only, the core. With only having I think four, I'd rather have Mike Williams. Yeah, I think I'd rather have Mike Williams also for that fifth wide receiver. Same. I like having at least five. Yeah, I have Julio Jones, Golden Tate, Josh Gordon. Sanders and Devontae Parker. That's my five. Jeez. Yeah, I love all those, but if you're dropping if you're dropping Parker, I, I think I would fill that spot. Because how many how many running backs do you have? I have Barkley, Cook, um, Penny, Sonny Michael, Alfred Morris, and Matt Brady. And Tariq Cohen as well. I'm not a fan of Cohen this year. I, I like him in PPR. I think he gets some work. Mm. Same here. I don't think he gets as much as last year. Mm. Um. So what do you Man, guys? I'm think? telling you, I, me and Lucas agreed twice. Yeah, I, would go I, I know. Man, I'm usually agreeing with never happens with <laughs> Lucas Moore or either agreeing with Mike Moore, which is right. weird. And and now it's me and Lucas against Toos, which does feel weird. Yeah. I'm like, well, where are you at? Who's back me up here? I'm like, hey, <laughs> no, <laughs> you're on the other side this time. So we we really like the upside of Mike Williams. We think so. There you go. Mike Williams is, is, the guy, spot. is the guy yeah. for you. Okay. And I like Mike Williams a lot. So, okay. I don't want to sound like so, I don't. So, so, so don't. He just got other so, nice so, pieces. So don't handcuff Murray. Mike Williams. Uh, What's that? So, so you're advising me not to handcuff uh, Cook with Murray then. I I I think so, but you know you got a two for one here, uh, not two for one. You got two against one here, um, so you're gonna go Mike Williams here. Uh, also check our rankings out, um, which won't answer your question, but it'll help you <laughs> with uh, who to start. You know, on a week to week basis, yeah. uh, sleepwire.com. All right, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send that trade out. So thank you guys, and I'll pick the Mike Williams. Thank you for your input, and uh, I want to give off this shout out to Carl from Sleepwire. He's one, I guess he's one of the admins, and we just got an inside joke. And I wanted to shout him out. He heard me the call, so I called. So, hello, Carl. <laughs> there we go. Guys. All right. All right, man. Appreciate, appre- appreciate the call. Uh, All right. and thanks. Call again next week. Okay, so our next uh, back over here to the questions. 
The next one that we have is from Sandman25. Wait, I think has, I interrupted... Uh, I think I interrupted uh, the, the tight end question, I believe. I think we went RSJ there. I think we just Yeah, I think that was across the ball. Did you on OSU 496? Okay. Yep, we went okay. RSJ for his. All right, cool. Um, and the next one here is with Sandman25. He has Crabtree and Crowder for his third and fourth wide receiver with Keelan Cole as his fifth. Adams and Tate are his one, two. My question is, would you look to trade either of them? Roster in the comments. Here's Melvin Gordon. Jordan Howard, Lamar Miller, Peyton yep. Barber, Arbor, Aaron, Aaron Jones. Jones. Devontae I, Adams, Golden Tate, Michael Crabtree, Jameis Crowder, Keelan Cole, Jack Doyle, and David and Juku. I think you're okay as is. Do you have uh, Drop Breed or Allison need a kicker? Mm, um, that's tough. I think I've dropped Allison, though. Allison, unfortunately. I don't yeah. want to right. uh, if you need a kicker, but I just can't. Try to do a two for one. Breed to me is just he's going to be too productive. He's the guy that will fit in that role. I love Alfred Morris, too. I think they'll be splitting a lot of work. But at the same time, I feel like Breed is going to be the guy that comes out ahead here. Yeah, I would drop Allison, and I wouldn't feel bad about it. Especially with Devontae Adams already on your team. I'll tell you, the guy to watch, I'm kind of disappointed he got hurt in the preseason, was Jake Kumaro. He ripped off a couple long touchdowns in the first and second preseason game for the Packers. And even though they put him on the pup, they, he made the 52-man roster. And so that tells you something. He's a wide receiver that you guys need to know because he's probably going to come back and be a strong target for Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know, I, I, as much as that was a nice flash of him, you know, what we saw of him, I think a lot of people were having fun with saying, go grab him. And at least I want to say that that's what people were doing just because we didn't see much of him. We saw a little bit, but. I don't know. I'd like to see more. It, it, it was nice to see him in the open field that touchdown he got, with all those yards he got. But I'd like to see more. I yeah. put him in my IR. Oh wow! Yep, he's in my IR spot right now. There's some some strong IR candidates. You, you could you put have Foreman out there. Uh, Foreman was drafted in my league. Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Um, but I do, I do like Foreman. I like Foreman a lot. Foreman is a good one. Uh, who else we got? What else do we got in the sack? I Curious George in- seventy seven says thoughts on Lynch playing against the stacks ra- stacked Rams defense. Mm-hmm. I don't like it. I think he's going to be all right if you have to start him. I think he's going to be okay. Yeah, I wouldn't be too nervous about starting him. Yeah. Oh. Indomica <laughs> Sue. Indomica Sue. That's all I have to say. I mean You'll be yeah. hearing that a lot on Monday night. It's it's definitely a strong team, but if if you have to start him, if you don't have someone better, I wouldn't I'm not worried about it. It's I wouldn't I wouldn't go to your waiver wire and put in Naheem Hines or something like that. You know, I wouldn't, right. I wouldn't do anything crazy. Yeah. It depends on what you got around him, but I don't like his, I don't like Oakland on Monday night. Los Angeles is tough. Yeah. Uh, on paper, we haven't yeah. really seen it. Yet, I mean, right? we, we don't know. Tough. The thing is, we don't know what curious George 77. We don't know what else she got, but I, I wouldn't be too worried. I'd be fine starting him. Um, considering we don't know the, the rest of your options. Now, uh, Steve's got a Mixler question from Taz 650. Should he drop RSJ for Brait or OJ? Uh, also, Ebron or ASJ standard. So any of those guys, should he drop um, RSJ for? I'm say no unless I mean week one. Ebron's got a nice schedule. Yep, 
maybe, maybe week one, you know, you can drop them and pick them up the week afterwards. Ebron has trade. been targeted. Yeah. Cause I feel like he might have a good week and he might be worth something yeah. next week, but maybe right. not for the rest of the season. I mean, exactly. Indianapolis has a pretty cushy. Season yeah. Though. Yeah. I'd take Ebron over RSJ for week one. Yep. Yeah. I, I Even think rest I, of season. I think uh, I'd go. I wouldn't do, Ebron, I wouldn't do so. rest of season. I wouldn't do rest of the season, but week one I would do. Well, I would. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Minimal impact. Thanks, fellas. Great answers. Many more. That's right. Uh, and then Steve's got another question. Ricardo Banks, 10. Uh, wait, 10? 10? 10 team. Yeah, 10 team half. Point PPR. Bell Royce. Uh, he's got Jamal Williams, Lewis, Wilkins, Michelle, and Howard. Uh, do I have too many backs? <laughs> My wide receivers are Cup, Landry, Diggs, Stills, and Mike Williams. Can you have too many backs? I don't think that's possible. The I answer think is, backs is great. <laughs> yep, you have five wide receivers, and I would l- keep the backs. you got to figure out which ones are going to pan out. You right. Know, if you should drop backs a few weeks in because a couple aren't panning out. Then yeah. Go ahead and do that and pick up a wide receiver that's doing something. Because it's it's week one. You don't have too many backs. You have a perfect amount of backs to right. see who's going to do what. And yep. that's not a bad wide receiver lineup. You're rocking not out. Not at all. Not at all. We got another question from the mixed lap. Brazy thirteen. Hey guys, I'm in the belief a lot. Powell will be in the starting running back to own in the Jets. Uh, and Crow, Crowell will be the backup. Do you agree? Where is Matt Ryan in your ranks outside of the top 12? Um, and then he's got an IDP question later after we answer this one. So first, um, no, I think it's Crowell instead of Powell. What about you guys? I think it'll I be Crowell. Yep, same. Um, and then the quarterback question, um, where is Matt Ryan in your ranks for a week? Dang, I got to pull up for week uh for, for for week one, but I mean over the over the course of the season, I have him ranked eighth. I think he has opportunity to be a top five this year, since he's in the second year of his offense learning. Um, I think he's a little bit more comfortable. He's got a lot more options, not a lot, but he's got another option. Uh, that's nice. Um. So I, I do like Matt Ryan. Uh, in my PPR rank, well, I'm a PPR. Am, am I for my quarterback ranks for Week One? I have them, uh, I have them ninth right now. So see, and I have them a little bit. I think I have them at like 17, something like that for the week. Uh, 18, as a matter of fact. And then for the season, though, I have them at 16. So outside of my top 12 for sure. Like well, this- I like Matt Ryan a lot this year. There's just I feel like there's just too many people I like more than him. I have Matt Ryan at 14 on the season. I have him in a group. There's a group that I had just all together. They could have really been interchangeable. And for me, it was Kirk Cousins, Stafford Luck, Rivers, Garoppolo, Matt Ryan, and then Derek Carr. And I like most of those guys about the same. Um, But I have... Kirk Cousins leading the way there at nine in that tier. But those guys are all in a tier for me. Almost the same exact, except Kirk Cousins is in a level above. But yeah, same thing. All right, that's about it. I think the sack is just about empty. We we got one more down there. I'm looking at it. No more. I didn't keep Bosa, Marcus Peters, or Miles Jack. Interceptions are worth more than tackles. Ooh. I don't like Miles Jack this week. That's where I'm sitting. I want to go Bosa. Who's? Yeah, I got. I like. I like Bosa also. Yeah. Oh. Well, well, there you have it. We got Bosa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. That's uh. That's about it for the sack. Um. It was. It was a nice full one. Now that we're empty, you guys hit us up on the Sleeper app. You guys hit us up on Twitter. You guys hit us up on a sleeperwire.com. Submit your questions. We answer them between 
uh, one hour, a minute, and in between 24 hours. We'll get back to you. That's our promise to you guys. Uh, also, our draft, if you haven't drafted yet, our, the kid is out there. If you know, for some reason you didn't draft yet, you know, and you're listening to this, and the season's pretty much started, almost, <laughs> but you still need to draft. Go out there and get the kit. Um, and yet we are always available. Uh, you can find Dirty Jobs. Where can they find you, Dirty Jobs? Where can they find you? Can you can basically just find me at Dirty Jobs uh, 21 on Twitter and then at Dirty Jobs on base on every one of my apps, uh, the Sleeper Bot, the Instagram. Uh, that's where you can find me. Look for Dirty Jobs. That's me. Lucas, where can they find you? You can find me everywhere at Sleeperwire LBB. That's right. Keep uh, that good stuff coming. And, uh, yeah, the sack is done. We're going to catch you guys next week. Uh, We're going to have the Blitz chat. It's going to be ready for you Sunday. So make sure you submit your questions for the Sleeper app. We're going to try to get it there for you right before the games and answer your questions. All right, that's it for the game. Uh, Well, the game for the the sack, guys. We'll we'll talk to you a little bit more after the games. Uh, Good luck, sleepers. Tear it up. Week one, baby. I want to thank you for listening to the Sleepwire Show, the most interactive and accessible fantasy sports podcast out there right now. If you want to reach us anytime, you can join our new Facebook group. Just search for Sleepwire Fantasy Football Club on the Facebook groups. Join us there. Find us on the Sleepwire channel in the Sleeperbot app. We're on the Fantasy Life app, and you can go to our webpage, sleepwire.com. Look for the advice section. You can send us email questions we answer within 24 hours or less. Oh, and lest I forget, we do two live shows a week during the season, the Wednesday Mail Sack and the Sunday Morning Blitz, where we answer your questions and take your calls live on the air. So keep in touch with us all year through these ways and more, only on The Sleepwire Show.